And then if, even if they do a lane swap, I feel like Faceless Void in the off lane against Lifester is just going to get clicked down to Oblivion, and he's just going to have such a terrible game. Okay. Sactor's just going to have a bad time no matter what. <laughs> we'll see. It's just this Beastmaster has not been very popular against the Faceless Void for many players for, I want to say, uh, over a year now. Because if you go the Axe build, you just kind of time walk it off on the Faceless Void. And you just max that. But if you do manage to successfully do the boar build, then yeah, it can be really bad for K1. So I'm very curious to see how it goes for Collapse. Collapse is one of like the best offlaners in the world, so I'm sure he has a good idea on how to run this one. I'm very curious to see how it pans out, though. Yeah, I wanted to look. There was one uh, Beastmaster that got played in the entire tournament so far. There have not been a lot of them almost at all. Uh, and let's see, it was played by Betboom uh, against Talon, and it was against a Life Stealer. It looks like. Um, and I want to see if he ended up going for the boar build or not, because it feels like if you're going to be taking Beastmaster in this situation, you definitely should be going for it. He's already queued up a uh, Helm of Ironwell. Yeah, I mean it's been kind of random to me sometimes when the beastmasters i don't play the hero much anymore i only played it a lot when the auras were popular but then started the people going to agonum's build right every game yeah. and it felt like 50 50. sometimes it looked really good and other times it looked really bad so i think in this particular game though you mentioned the life sphere faces void these two heroes both in this game as well have the same thing in common they just have like a bunch of passives and they don't have the abilities to nuke I creeps, right? So. All they can right. do is right click. So they can't really deal with these boars if they're microed correctly. And at this level, these players know how to micro their boars if they're going to be picking the hero. So they shouldn't be too worried about that. So it's going to be a lot up to KJ here. His hero is actually pretty good at just clicking boars down and nuking it down with Nether Blast. He's going to have to put a lot of effort into that. But he is going to be playing against Mira on the Tusk, so if he does get aggressive on the boars, Mira will punish him. Oh, wait, so no, it maybe it won't be so easy for him after all. Yeah, oh, there's a chance. Um, I, I will also want to kind of mention, um, it, because there has been all of this change in terms of uh, how long it's been since we've been seeing an answer, I, I, I'm imagining, tell me if I'm right on this, that that time period... It, there was not like the hawk adding extra insult to injury of getting roots on you as you're trying to like time walk away too right yeah that change hadn't been put in yet so that that's another way that it's like an even better answer uh, uh sort of against faceless void depending I mean, on if they get caught yeah it's been give and take right because the boars used to be a lot stronger too at level one <laughs> right but now yeah it's, it's definitely interesting dynamic because void cannot deal with the hawks and the boars but before, when it was a really hard counter, you couldn't even deal with the boars. But the boars got nerfed really hard. Now you have a hawk now, too. We'll see if he has the mana to be able to sustain all that, though. Here's tried to get in there, but wasn't able to outclick KJ, and he's taken some damage. He was even going to jump forward and get a few more little hits onto that on fire. fire. Quite literally, that's pretty model. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really fit the war of toss, but Phylama, Schofield, moving in, blood grenade out. Oh, they just wanted to get the range creep. Huh. Curing that one. But oh. will it be worth it though, is if you get your other creeps denied here? Perhaps not. But looks like it won't be so bad for him. The Toro taken. Lots of damage here from the harass of the Vailama. Oh my god. The, the courier? Okay. Just shards the courier to get the kill onto it. KJ's courier goes down. That had a uh, a sentry ward on it. So only one available is going to be able to unblock the camp if he wants, but can't re-block theirs. Well, he will get his small camp unblocked, so... That is okay for now. Courier is only dead for 40 seconds, so not the biggest deal in the world. And they're on bottom lane here. They got their lane back in position the way they wanted to by cutting the wave there at level 1. I think they really just want to help the Timber Saw get his levels up as soon as he can. And he's just going to block out for a little bit, but for now, with the Whirling Axe, or not the Whirling Axe, that's the Timber Saw, the Wild Axe. There's a lot of axes in this game between the heroes. 
not enough to get a kill. And the boars will start being leveled up now. And I think he realizes as well on collapse. Level 1 boars, they're terrible. They get a bit better, though, once you get to level 3. So he'll probably put that second point there and start summoning them around that time frame. Okay, one. He's trying to put the hurt on while he can. Collapse does have a tango work in. Getting passed over for Mira, but had to buy more and also has a bracer coming up. Two minutes into the mid lane, very even so far as you might expect. Two points in lightning, analog hanging on to the point. Deciding if he Radiant wants to go for more in a diabolic edict eventually, if he sees an opportunity to hit a split earth. We'll have to see, but I've definitely seen a lot of less tracks just not get done, weirdly enough, until around level five or even later. Sometimes on until like level eight. That was nice. Okay, so KJ, one nether blast at level one and one right click means the boar is dead. Uh, <laughs> that's level one boar. Not good. <laughs> but he should have level two boars now. We'll see if he puts two points in it or goes for another point in axes. Two points in axes it is. It looks like he wants to play with the axes in this thing. Interesting. Instead, maybe on KJ. something onto KJ, but he TPs out. Root, root. Oh, no. That uh, stupid bird. Didn't go for it. Man, that's crazy. Oh, I wonder, oh it's because it's a base attack time. It's technically attacking, right? I think so. Yeah. Interesting. Well, regardless, it is a uh, down bottom, slightly better lane going on for Divine Llama than we're seeing at top for the Beastmaster. Yeah, still not really shutting down Yatoru here, but with the two points in Whirling Death, I think Yator is going to start feeling a lot of pain here. Avalanche is online. Uh, didn't quite time that one correctly. I was expecting Yatoro to go up a little bit. Good. And if he wants on Yatoro, the Whirling Death is a dispellable buff. So if he wants to, he can rage to give himself some instant HP back. Okay. Well, so far, KJ is going to keep on taking a bit of a beating from Mira but they can't really threaten each other fully for any kills. It's just kind of been a bit of a poke and prod going on instead. Um, but yeah, the lanes, nobody like fully pulling way ahead of everybody else. Definitely Faceless Void is having a good time. Um, and so it's not going to be that shutout that we thought could potentially happen as it's going more for the axes on collapse. And maybe it's just not as good as it used to be, like you're saying. Yeah, and I would say like this lane... I don't see the point of the Beastmaster if you can't even win the lane, to be honest with you. So I think for Heroic, this is definitely a big win for them. I think when they picked this Beastmaster, they expected this lane to go a little differently than what it is right now. So good for K1 to get out of the laning stage here with complete free farm, honestly. And I think at this point of the laning stage, you got treads online for K1. You are not going to be in a situation where I feel like you're going to be pressuring this faceless void, at least not in the laning stage. Another connection there onto KJ. He just stands there and takes it. Not at all concerned as down bottom. Getting somewhat low on these two heroes, but not dying yet. And Yadaro will just keep on tangling up as they're underneath the Top tower. Lane, trying to get they aggressive onto KJ. See if they can bring down this Pugna. He manages to get another decrep off. And now the avalanche rotation and the blood grenade turns into a kill. Collapse getting body blocked by Hector. And two going the way of heroic. What a great rotation from Schoolfield there. If he wouldn't have came in with that avalanche, both K1 and KJ would have had some major problems right there. So bad turning to worse here for Team Spirit with this top lane. No TPs available though. Oh, they're not going to go for it. Walking. Toss away. Shards out. In a log. They still focus fire still going. on. He needs that. Oh, he needs no. to get the rune in time to slow down for Mira. It was enough. Wow. And that's just the pain right there. The focus fire plus the tag team combination. Level two tag team there. And yeah, of course, focus fire. It lasts 20 seconds. So even though he used it way back then, it was still active. And she had that kill and fire. Duration reduced. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't. I'd be okay with it. Wonder Ranger's a disgusting hero. 
Absolutely. Regardless, a nice move into the mid lane sets up for uh -oh. a win. Wisdom Reel. Mafoshka's going to be high enemy lines here. Will he oh. steal it away from Defy? Yes, sure. he will. That's double. Damn. Big plays. That is Much what needed. you want to see for Team Spirit. Oh, that's a return. They made this collapse here. Looking for it. Kill off that Hawk. KJ still chasing. Does have team prep again. If they Goldfield's move here. in and they will be able to bring down Collapse. Goldfield picking up that kill. So the bullying continues onto this last pick, Beastmaster. And this is what I was talking about why they probably went for this Timber last pick to allow Schofield to do what Schofield does best. And that's just roam around the map here. Divide Llama, he doesn't care. He's like, I'm Timber, so I want to be alone. So feel free to do what you want to do on this tiny here. And mm. Schofield is for sure doing it. And he's doing it big this game. Yeah. So you can see Lesh retreating back to the jungle, farms up a couple of stacks. No stun for analog. This is, again, a bit of a scary spot. It's going to be an arcane rune. Smear it. Oh, they tossed him back. <laughs> oh, and now the snowball over. Skullfield picks up the arcane, so not able to save it for analog, but does get the kill on Amira. Still big win, and Skullfield honestly played that perfectly. There's like a world in which he doesn't get this rune for his team and doesn't even kill the toss. Like the toss back into the avalanche into just barely taking the rune right away kj no decrepify can he survive for five more seconds not even close he can even survive for two it was a cool play by him though he uh dropped down a sentry and then decrypt the rubik so he couldn't deny his own ward um but he ends up paying the price for it there he, he does Things going uh, still pretty even. The main differentials are Wind Rangers ahead of the Lash. Uh, pretty a lot. significantly. <laughs> yeah, pretty very significant. Um, but Faceless Void also having a good game is what you want to see when you know you're playing against a Lash or a, a Life Stealer. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Faceless Void having a great game. Same with the Wind Ranger. And life here obviously doing good, just that's mainly just off the back of the rotations, right? Schofield's just never in Divine Llama's lane, so of course in a 2v1 situation, you're not going to succeed there. Oshka gets three points in Nether Blast, so some yeah. big nukes could be coming out. If they're not careful, this could be a burst potential onto K1 with Roar available. He's got to be really scared. Time walk was just used. They're looking for the roar. Snowball. Oh, and the chrono. Just to turn. Realizes he's in trouble. Has to jump away. Things got weird. Things got real weird. And now they move in with the Vi. And it might be enough. K1. He time walks all of it off. Schofield is going to die, but they get two in return. And now on to collapse. Once the TP out, will it be in time? No. The Vi Llama gets the double kill. That was so close to horrific for heroic. And it ended up being great. Yeah, they ended up rotating five heroes for Heroic for that one, but just the right amount of numbers. If they would have had even one less hero there, maybe that goes disastrously wrong for them as that group would have got another round of that blast off and potentially got some kills as well. So, but that does mean Yatoro does get a lot of space. It does mean Laurel even got even more space, but still worth it for Heroic as that particular fight got them up to a 1k advantage here. But at some point, they're going to have to find a way to deal with the big boys on Team Spear. And that's going to be Laurel, and it's going to be Yatoro, who's already crushing the Tier 1 bottom. And now they're pressuring the Tier 1 mid to boot. Bye. We'll keep them at bay. Maposhka stealing Chakram. Always nice to do against the Timber Saw. Goodbye. Not too afraid of Laurel here at all. Just standing right in front of him. Has Soul Ring, oh, Arcanes. I mean, he's got a ton of armor, right? The the combination of like a Soul Ring and Wraith Band, it's pretty solid. Yeah, he's definitely very survivable right now. And with the Pugna behind him, he's nigh unkillable, I would say, at this point of the game. And I think for a little bit, that's just going to be the case. And you for sure are going to see 
Whether it's Yatoro or whether it is Laurel, one of them will be getting a Nullifier, and that'll be a big item for this game at some point when they do manage to pick it up. But I'm a little Wait. worried. A little worried for the fact of what's going to happen here. I've <laughs> seen this uh, replay um, and the game on pausing. I just realized, because I looked at our PGM feed, that uh, I have the Violama muted. I don't know how that happened. Uh, Sorry about that, dude. Um, but I'm going to unmute him so I can see what he's saying now. He's, he's talking a little bit. That's okay. I have default. Oh, Meantime, K1 does have the entire Maelstrom done. Um, and also two Giant healing lotuses. Is under a little bit of extra survivability. Uh, in case they do decide to all jump them. I, I will say with like an untouched faceless void in any game nowadays, those games just feel so much harder for the opposing team to win. Like th this hero feels like it's the be all end all of carries right now if you're not playing like a fast tempo Luna or something. Oh, for sure. And once you get level 20 on faceless void and you're free farming up until that point, it is very difficult to not get kills in Chromosphere if you land them. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But yeah, Toro is keeping up with them, and Laurel's even ahead, so I think a lot of this game is gonna be, A, can they recover on Collapse? Because Collapse's game has been pretty bad, but it's on par with how bad Leshrac's game has been, too. I mean, these are two heroes that don't particularly playing from behind, but luckily they both have tools in which they can come back from behind. Right. The question for me is gonna be for Heroic, They've had a good game so far. Are they going to be able to keep up the pressure and not just let it up? Because I feel like if they let up the pressure, it's going to just allow this Beastmaster Radiant to get back into the game here. It's going to allow this Wind Ranger to get to more critical items here. And I feel like that's something you don't particularly want to do. Maybe you want to go out and use this Chrono, put on cooldown, go for a kill on either Yatoro, or more importantly, I'd say Laurel would be a good kill with this Chrono Sphere. Make something happen, because the map is going to start feeling a little small, as you've seen. Team Spirit, they've already taken two towers and they're going Ooh. for third. Well, and they did just miss on the Timber Chain, which means the Vilama sticking around a bit longer. No Let's response. get some separation there. It's like he will manage to escape. But I don't think their tower is going to be able to escape as no. it doesn't have the ability to walk away. Yatoro will take it down. And that's three quick towers. And Yatoro, he's going to gate to bottom. It looks like the, the call is to defend this. Nah, he decided not to. That's a crazy move. Yeah, yeah analog really showed. Wasn't. They thought about it, but decided against it here. You can see Devai, he's also up top, um, kind of giving some amount of farm over to Schofield. They really want to set this tiny up for success. He's, what, around 700 gold or so away from finishing off a Blink Dagger? If he could get to that item, that's another really big window. Uh, and in the meantime, for Team Spirit, they want to take as much advantage of this space they've been given around the map as possible. Have a bottled DD for Laurel. Yep, collapse with the farm in the jungle here. Yatora farming the other jungle in the lane. Bottom lane is pretty much free pickings, but that's going to be the most difficult lane to farm. So I think they're going to send Mira down there. So if you do manage to dive and kill the tusk, oh well, who cares? You know what I mean? So he's going to take up that dangerous farm. If you just look at the state of the map here, you're just farming a little bit more at the current state of the game right now on Team Spirit. You're going to have to kick out Yatoro or manage to try and kill Mira here because they're playing on three lanes and jungle right now. And even like in this mid lane, this isn't a safe place for the Lesh to even farm on analog because there's no tower to TP to to help if the Wind Ranger decides to just dive or if there happens to be one other hero in the area. Um, but like we talked about Schofield, he got the space. It's a decent timing on that Blink Dagger at 15 minutes now. Yeah, with Mana Boots, it's been pretty luxurious, honestly. He's very farmed right now. And KJ as well seems pretty farmed as well, getting very close to his Aetherlands. I think the big difference is the gold on the supports here on the side of Broke. They're going to hit a timing here. Blink Dagger yeah. online. Not quite there to the Aetherlands, but he's getting real close. And that's going to come before any items manage to come on Team Spirit supports. So now is a good window to go. They realize that. As you can see, their net worth lead is dwindling just a little bit because they're not farming as efficiently. 
Oh. They can make that up with potential kills here. They try and go and divide. Do they know this bait is coming though? Ava toss back into the stun. They miss the stun. Doesn't, Doesn't matter. Run, Get the kill. Run, 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 that was such a good bait by Divide. He looked like he was playing a little greedy, stepping tower, forward there attack. to get that uh, last hit with the whirling death. I mean, that's the thing about Divide Llama, right? It's like half those times he actually is alone. <laughs> you know what I yeah. Mean? <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> you just got to take a gamble with him. It's like, is he actually just being crazy again or is he baiting? Who knows? Like, come on, guys, it's Divide Llama. He's alone for sure. But, and then you all show up and it's like, just one of those there's just players like that out there that make you second guess everything and i think it was on the seb interview yesterday where he mentioned in a good way that heroic they play reckless right and yeah they play to win and it's stuff like that that really kind of gets at you especially if you're a team like team spirit that's used to playing these teams that like to play more like to the book and more structured and you play against a team that is being a little bit more rowdy you're gonna be like oh well Fool me once, I guess. We'll see if it happens Dive. again. Yeah, I mean, that that's one of those emerging storylines where you maybe don't feel as comfortable in your calls anymore. Uh, dire scan, they hit onto the Tusk, who did just get his Blink Dagger completed as well. So Mira, no Arcane Boots to match the tempo of the Tiny, but another one of these melee position fours is ready to get active. And yeah, move it into the Roche Pit. I mean, he's trying to solo this. Does Beastmaster solo Roche on? I was uh, unaware of this phenomenon. I mean, Maybe. he's doing it. That's pretty Our strange. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he actually kind of just does, I guess. He took half little. of it all by himself, yeah. And honestly, I feel like he probably could have done the other half, too. Right. There you go. Now we know. Helma Overlord, Beastmaster, and Solo Roshan. I'm gonna go try that with Darkseer later. <laughs> I don't Blind think that's the same. No, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I think the Wild Axe damage amplification on your creeps uh, hitting it is most of the damage, Radiant's not an item shell. <laughs> but you know what? You do you. You go ahead and try okay. it. It's MMR, not mine. Fair enough. I don't play for MMR anymore. Oh, there you go. Ooh, it's your uh, mid gate progress, not mine. Right. Um, there is an invis rune on analog now. I always feel like this is a fun one with Lesh if you can like catch people off guard. Just go invis as you pop your uh, all of your spells. Jumps in, tries to find one. A1 jumps away. Snowball does not end up hitting, and instead it's going to be the split earth onto Mira. Every move that Spirit make, it feels like heroic is just kind of there and ready. Yeah, we call the Lesh track one when you use the spells, it's the IQ test. Ah, okay. It's uh, less prevalent than like the bounty hunter with an ion shell on them. That's the ultimate IQ test. Sometimes just, people just die and don't even know how. How'd you think I got the 5k? <laughs> <laughs> ion shell and bounty hunters. <laughs> M clicking on me. <laughs> how smart are you to realize that you're dying? I mean, I believe at the lower MMRs, people probably just don't know what's going on. They just die. I could, I could believe it. It was kind of cheesy. It's gotten better over the years, though be fair regardless it is now three four to nine excuse me as the tiny just gets brought down on the bottom side of the map it definitely does not feel like heroic are under feeling pressured to make moves um and i'm curious if team spirit are going to decide to take a timing fight uh with everything that's going on because heroic are not pushing the tempo at all I don't feel like they necessarily need to by any means yeah. because they have faces void and whenever you're playing faces void as long as the game is even you're pretty happy he'll get out manta and he's going in i don't know about this oh, one oh ball mira yeah a little bit too excited to make that move and they toss back the rubik but poshka also found this is their timing with aegis how was Spirit supposed to make some moves together? And oh, jeez. That felt like a little bit of frustration because he gets the time walk off and then you use your Gleipnir and then he mantas that off. And then I feel like at that point, you're tunnel visioning, right? He's out after that. And you're like, okay, right. I guess I'm going to just go. You even see the TPs there. So maybe even Team Spirit and these potential tiebreakers feeling a little bit of a pressure. 
I mean, yeah, it, I guess that is one thing. Like, we've been talking about the strength of Faces Void late game. If you're a pro player, you're definitely feeling it and feeling like maybe you didn't get as much out of these early stages as you wanted. Um, but time will tell how it all plays out. For now, at least, it's heroic that continue to nurse the 3K gold lead. Four now, but I think they're definitely feeling it on here, especially because his lane was designed to slow down the faceless void, and that just didn't happen this game. Like, not at all. K1, top one net worth in the game here, right where he wants to be. They'll end up killing the Tormentor, and that will go to Maposhka. So now you have the bit of save on the telekinesis there, is under attack. which is pretty nice in all regards here. Both supports have decent shards. And I think on the other side, I, this is actually a pretty bad shard game for all supports. I won't say bad. I will say tiny shard is like Radiant one of the less seven. desirable ones. Right. Not that it's useful. I mean, it's still, it's like a quality of life thing, right? It doesn't really change any team fights or anything. Pugna shard in the right game could be good, but with a level one ward here, no illusions. Not the greatest thing either. Yeah. You ever you work on farming? Probably a terrible idea. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've never seen it. It doesn't. I don't think it works on creeps at all. I think it's just heroes, right? Okay. Yeah, it's only heroes, so it won't even affect creeps. If you just do it, you'll just look dumb. <laughs> Dyer's top yeah, it's life draining your ward. <laughs> all right. They start to move up. This is a smoke from Heroic. They will catch sight of Poshka briefly heading through the river. And that is another kill. Life drain your ward, quick. Nice up. Quickly. Yeah, Jay does have all your HP. He's also level 12. Yeah. I mean, he, he's had a really good game. He just had a great tournament overall. He's been solid. I mean, Schofield's level 13. He's like the supports yeah. there. Quite far ahead here. And Schofield, he's already got the blink. He has the force up. I feel like every time I watch Schofield, he just builds all the annoying items. Like, he'll just buy a blink, force, duels, ghost scepter, you know, E Blade, Wooden Raker. And that's like his go to build. Just like being hard to catch and having some mobility and making you really work for the kill. I guess that's the best way to put it. Yeah. Well, it fits his playstyle too, because he's the type of player that likes to run in and die. So he's like, it's sort of similar to what we talked about with Divi earlier, right? If you, if you think that you can just get a free kill on Skullfield and then he lives longer and then the team comes in and like cleans up, that's the dream for them. Yeah. Um, for Spirit, I, I mean, we've seen a lot of life stealers carry these games into the later stages. They also have this like Wind Ranger combination with the tag team and Tusk. Uh, what is their timing now? What are they like trying to do around the map? Is Analog going to get brought down there? No, he backs away. Oh, Faces Void coming in with a Lincoln attack. Spear here. And Nullifier is the item oh. of Beastmaster. Oh! oh what <laughs> collapse! Dude. What a play! That was sick. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of the game that at some point this Wind Ranger or Leicester is going to have to make a Nullifier. Yeah. To kill him. Claps is like, now nah, I'll just get Nullifier as my second item. Yeah. So that is available for him now, but there's. It's an interesting dynamic now because the face is void. He has a Lincolns. So you might have to use this Nullifier just to pop the Lincolns at some point. But I think you need the Roar and the Nullifier. So you're going to have to do some communication here with Mposhka perhaps to break this Lincoln Sphere. And they're going to go in now. Uh, Aegis is down. Smoke is out. Life Sphere is inside of the Tuskar. Team Spirit, it's go time. I've seen so many Team Spirit games where it looks bad through 25 minutes, and then they hit this timing and things start to turn back around. Will this be another Radiant's one of those situations or are Heroic ready for it? Looks like they want to make this move and Heroic just aren't giving it to them. They understand what's coming their way and are playing super defensively. Heads up play right there. there. And they burst K1 if he shows for a moment. Oh, they moment. see the couriers. They know exactly where they're going. Life Stealer still inside that tusk. They re-smoke. I mean, it, they've got to be careful now here. They do have wards, so they can each play around their vision. But no, Heroic, they're just out. They TP away. That's That was such good presence of mind by Heroic. Yeah, that was very good discipline. They realized, both teams realized the same thing, right? 
All right, we're both on our high ground vision. Whoever leaves this spot will lose the fight. And so neither of them left their spot. They held their ground and did the responsible thing. And I think that is something that's like very indicative of showing how this game is going. And Yatoro, he does TP through the gate. And I don't know about this skill field. Are you baiting? He might be. Link Force Staff just running into a life sphere by himself at the moment. The teams are converging. Mira, do you want to chrono this man? By the time dilation, and now they're on to him. Focus, but uh, that did not hit on anything actually. Mira's just down. Yadro runs into everybody. They chrono just barely hitting onto the edge for collapse. They're trying to take down Analog with the life sphere. He does not have the control that he needs. They killed. To Yadara will get a courier randomly. And now Laurel focus on the timber as they try and run away. The infest inside tries to escape. Not gonna happen. Yadaro goes down. Laurel also in trouble, getting punched to death by a timber saw. The damage from analog, all five dead. What a masterclass from heroic. It definitely is here. They try to make the play, but they were on the wrong page on Team Spirit there. Half the team was running from the tier two tower upwards. The other one took the gate. Maybe that was their plan all along, but Heroic were all together at the same time there. The Chrono goes off, kills the Beastmaster immediately. Gofield, as per usual in this game, just doing what he can. He tosses the Rubik back into the Timber Saw spells. Gets the Life Spiller at the end with the Chrono, with the Avalanche, sorry, into the toss. Man, what a game from pretty much everyone here on the side of Heroic. I mean, I'll say Analog's game has been a little bit quiet, but it's been just good enough. Everyone else is just having such a good game, it's hard to talk about them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're slaying. I mean, this is exactly what you want to see. And now, for Spirit, you're in this awkward spot where you feel the need to come and contest this. Laurel is running out. It's going to take him a second to get there. Will they be able to get to Roche in time? I don't think so. It's dropping too quickly. They're just a little ways away. Mir does have Blink Dagger. They're going to get no close chrono, to though. it. Jump in. Finding Schofield, but he got the Blink away. Or the Force Staff, rather. Schofield gets out. Now collapses in trouble. It's all falling apart. Can they salvage this somehow? Divai Lama, Gleipnir is there. But the heal coming from the Pugna on the high ground. Can they it's take so down Divai Lama? He's living through it so long. And now they don't have enough left in the tank to deal with the rest of these heroes. K1 jumps in, wants to find a bash onto Yadaro. That is still too dead as Schofield also falls. But the time dilation, it's one bash. too That's all long. He needs. The slow. One bash. Will they get he it? They it. get the Ursa Wood instead. He didn't get a bash that whole time. <laughs> yeah, he really didn't, but it didn't even matter. The stuff was there from Analog. It goes better than last time, but it's still not good enough at all. Out, not gonna happen. Yule Scepter lift up, and Maposhka is going to die. 15,000 gold lead with Aegis in hand. It's definitely scary, and that was a fight with no Chronosphere. So the next fight they go into, they gotta deal with K1's Chronosphere, and they just don't have the tools to deal with Chronosphere whatsoever in this game. And they're running out of defensive and offensive capabilities here. They tried to go on a Tiny and kill him with everything. And they still did not have the damage for that. They've just ran out of damage at this point. Which is weird to say when you're playing like a Wind Ranger, Lifester, Beastmaster type of combination with the Tusk, but just the power of the items right now is just too much. The Pugna sitting behind with the Life Drain continuously saving. If your Nullifier is ever on cooldown, that Decreptify will be there to save someone. Difficult game ahead of four of the King Spirit. I mean, this is an, a really interesting uh, situation too, right? Because these best of ones, you obviously want to stay in until the bitter end. You want to try and, uh, you know, get yourself set up, but there's still a lot of matches yet to be played um, that help determine this. It feels to me like Team Spirit was the team that was more rattled coming into this. And maybe that's just a function of like, the picks and how the draft went and, you know, the Beastmaster not getting the game that he wanted at the start, but uh, a couple of those dives, a couple of those like overextensions and uh, constantly just being met by Heroic and getting their moves shut down. It's been all them. Maybe there's been another Dying angle you overlooked. Awful. Maybe it's just because we didn't cast the last game for Heroic because whenever we cast Heroic, they seem to show up. That's right. It's and, and play big. <laughs> uh, Back in their comfort here. 
It doesn't bode well for them for the rest of the tournament because we're just <laughs> after the group stage. Maybe they'll be too. Um, uh oh. That's okay. At least for now, though. Heroic looking good. This is the heroic that we're used to casting. The one that's Absolutely. in charge, making plays, winning games here. Only one minor hiccup we saw from this squad. And you're high always ground. allowed to have one. Absolutely. On the high ground is Laurel, but Heroic standing behind Analog, who has the Aegis still in hand for a minute 30. They're just going to Diabolic Edict, take down this tier three tower. KJ's behind, healing it back up. Ooh, threatening, but Manson's there. With the tier three down, do they go for more? Hector doesn't have Aegis, but does have that cheese. I think he was just trying to spook a BKB from Laurel there, but Laurel doesn't use it. They'll play it nice and slow here. And do you need to go high ground here is the question. You are up 19,000 gold. You do have Aegis cheese. They'll just slowly go at it. See where this goes. Jump in, tries to burst them. Analog still fine for the moment. In and out goes K1. Lift up. Schofield's off to the side. The focus fire. Not turning into anything after the fact. Now they do still have Chrono if they want to do it. Drops it onto two. Shackle. The shackle shot though, and Mira, is he gonna die? He will go down, and they're gonna find a couple more. Nice toss uh, by the life stealer into the Chrono. And well, now that's a full set of racks, and they're going for more. Heroic want to close out this best of one in style. No buyback on Life Stealer or on the Beastmaster. They're both dead. That is just about going to do it. Although they do get gold for buyback somehow on the Beastmaster. Still tier three towers going down. Stands there for a moment. No Chronosphere, but still comfortable hitting away. Yeah, and this is for sure going to be Megas here. We've got 30 seconds down here. You have no spells whatsoever to take out these five heroes that are still alive. So they're just going to play for their throne at this point. Absolutely. Laurel going to pop that BKB. A couple more hits. The roar is there on to K1, but GG Hold is called as Heroic take the first best of one in this series of time.